Well, she's what, like 16 years old? So these yeah. guys themselves wouldn't be more than 17 years old. And like the kinds of people who are like, yes, I'm going to be a chiropractor or whatever. <laughs> At 16. Hi. Hello. How are you? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, how are you? I'm okay. I'm in a good mood, all things considered. We've had an interesting day. Mm -hmm. Very interesting day. But all things considered, I'm in a good mood and uh, I'm really happy to be doing this with you tonight. <laughs> Excellent. So am I. So this is our second attempt at recording today. We've had some audio issues uh, that we thought were resolved. So we came back to record a little later since we had no longer had time to record the first time. And then our audio issues were not resolved. Um, like troubleshooting. Yes. Yeah. It's um, difficult sometimes. So here we are again. We are the Belladonna Watch Club. Come get cozy with us while we dig into iconic shows and movies that one of us has never seen before. So the rules are that somebody needs to be coming with fresh eyes while the other person is pretty into the thing that we're watching. Like, oh my gosh, you haven't seen this? I can't believe you haven't seen this. And um, it's turning out that this is really just me being like, Jenny, you haven't seen this? And me just being like, watch things. And I was also <laughs> thinking about this yesterday, how I made you play Animal Crossing. Yes. And then you got a switch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, so I'm feels, easily yeah. influenceable. Yeah, yeah. And I am, I'm just like a, a dog with a bone sometimes. I'm just like, this is the best and you need to do it, please. I don't mind. I don't mind at all. You also like yeah. quality stuff. So, I mean, if you uh, liked absolute garbage, okay. that would be a total, totally different story. <laughs> we would not <laughs> like, have right. a podcast. <laughs> we would not have a podcast. One of these days, we'll get you on to Golden Girls. I also was thinking, I really, I haven't seen any of the Beatles movies, and we have talked about this. <gasps> and I know, and I really want to watch uh, one of the Beatles movies ASAP, uh, because I was playing Yellow Submarine for my girls in the car on the way home from daycare the other day, and we were having a lot of fun. And that's what made me be like, hey, why can't we cover a Beatles movie? So, Oh my gosh, yes. A Hard Day's Night, I think. I think A Hard okay. Day's Night is, is the mandatory one. Mm -hmm. Okay, deal. Super deal. Okay, I'm into it. In the meantime, we are watching Gilmore Girls Season 1. We are on Episode 16. This is Star-Crossed Lovers and Other Strangers. This episode is centered around the Stars Hollow Founders Firelight Festival, which is the story of the town's origin. And so as Stars Hollow does, there is a big to-do about this festival. And it's very cozy and romantic because it's about, you know, star-crossed lovers and the whole town is all giddy and mushy and coming together while Lorelai is a big old grump about the whole thing. It is Rory and Dean's three-month anniversary, which for a 16-year-old is enormous. Dean has these plans for, for them for their anniversary. Rory manages to get out of Friday night dinner to go on this date. And Lorelai gets surprised with um, a date of her own, which she was not expecting. And another unexpected occurrence <laughs> in this episode is the um, return of Rachel. Rachel comes back. So what did you think? I rather enjoyed this episode, probably because it sort of, it, it felt very focused. It didn't feel huge. I don't think there were any arguments or yelling fights in this episode, finally. Um, I enjoyed this sort of, uh, this whole contrast of the whole town being very like lovey-dovey and romantic and like in, in love is in the air kind of flirty feeling. And Lorelai basically maintaining all the way through just Pah! romance. Pah! <laughs> Everyone, there's couples everywhere. Pah. Um, for her being such a romantic personality and such a romantic character, I this is where I felt like her because I myself love romance and I love romance stories and like ah, I have a, such a romantic brain. But I've been single for nearly seven years, and from time to time, I'm just in the circumstances where I'm like, I don't want to see another couple ever again. Just get out of my way. Stop. Kissing, stop holding hands, shut up. Bah. So You're disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> so I just felt very like I don't know. 
I, 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 I felt an affinity uh, for her and, and the circumstances okay. this episode. But uh, but yeah, I actually rather enjoyed it. There were some very unusual characters and um, hey, yes. I liked it. <laughs> so um, there is some arguing in this episode, but it is at the very end, right? It's not like yes. the entirety oh, yes. of the episode is people fighting, right? But um, it's a pretty heavy episode at the the very end and then it takes a turn a very sudden turn and you're like, oh. yes exactly yeah. exactly the whole tone just completely shifts and i i agree i love this episode just for any of the episodes where they get so decked out in stars hollow pride or any seasonal pride there's decorations there's a festival there's a like performance like it just oh i love it I love it so much. Any excuse to get Lane out on a date with a bunch of different Koreans and looking like really <laughs> upset about it is like, okay, let's do it. Hey, right. We're in like <laughs> bonfire. We're in. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. And yeah, it's just a really absurd episode in some ways, just because of, of the characters, like the, the guy that ends up at the dinner is just so ridiculous and obnoxious and ugh, like he makes your skin crawl but that makes it such a good episode <laughs> yes yeah yeah okay so we start off uh in a slightly different way it is a narration there's a voiceover and so you're panning through the town and everybody is busying themselves with the preparation for this firelight festival it's Miss Patty telling the story about the star-crossed lovers from two counties and their families didn't want them to be together. Sounds an awful lot like something we've all heard before. <laughs> uh, but what I really love about this is in the background. So it's Lorelai walking through. Or no, it's a bunch of different people. You get different people bunch. doing different things, right? And so you see uh, everybody sort of like working on on their piece. Uh, and so it's just sort of panning through as as patty is doing the storytelling and the background all of the trees have these like twinkly silver stars in them and even though it's daytime because usually you think of like fairy lights and stuff like that that bring this like ambiance to like outdoor spaces like that these twinkly stars are just so beautiful and i'm such a sucker for sparkles and glitter and <laughs> twinkles and like little like fireflies like everything like that i just such it's a like glimmering glimmering mm -hmm. in the sunshine it's a really yeah. beautiful it's a springy i don't know if it's like late winter or early spring at this point i'm not sure but it, it's a sunny day in stars hollow and it's just twinkling and i actually i i wrote down the people that we follow through the through the square so it starts we start on jackson jackson passes over to lorelei then somebody i don't know someone we haven't met before which moves on to rory Rory meets with Lane. Lane and Rory all meet Suki, and Suki passes it along to another stranger, and we cross over the street again. So we just, but we follow them all in one take, and we eventually end up at Miss Patty's. She's telling the story to some young children, and she is wearing the most incredible leopard print shawl. Mm. <laughs> it is stunning. She's just draped in leopard print and she's got her long <laughs> cigarette and she is just in her element and clearly in love with this story. She is such a romantic and like a fantastical woman. And I just, oh, I could listen to her chat about her stories all day. And she actually, cont <laughs> she continues. Oh, we have a little bit more time left. Who would love to hear about, was it my, my, the time I danced for somebody, somebody in 1966. <laughs> So, like, so yeah. it was the time I danced in a cage for Tito Puente in 1966. <laughs> so I googled who the heck is Tito Puente and he is known as like the Mambo Cake. <laughs> of course. Um, of course. I like that she was in a cage. <laughs> like, oh, right. Patty. In 1966 as well. Like what on earth? Like, go, go dancing. Incredible. And so the scene has been set for this very love infused episode <laughs> rory meets dean after school he's waiting for her she gets off the bus and they are talking a little bit about this tolstoy novel that rory has asked him to read uh, they didn't actually say the name of it did they do you know which one it is it's anna karenina and i only ah. know that because 
he makes the whole point of she throws herself under a train. And that's like the only thing that I know about Anna Karenina. Other, like, I know that it's about these young people. They have an affair and they run off to be together and they escape to somewhere. I, I don't, I've never read it. it. It is very, very long, but it is uh, sort of renowned as being like one of the, if not the best and one of the best novels ever like written in our time. I don't know. I can't speak on that. But uh, it is quite famously very dramatic. And yeah, she's Sounds got herself it. under a train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Dean is struggling with it because it's long and all the names end in ski and he's confused. And But he does say he'll give it another shot because Rory says it's romantic. It's, you know, all these things. And he's like, hmm. And then they kind of get into the, the the festival a little bit and how the town really loves to celebrate. And I like that Rory kind of teases him about that by saying that they had a month-long festival after they came off the septic systems in the town. <laughs> but that the actual story was that there was like a ribbon-cutting ceremony, which <laughs> is still hilarious. And I could, you know, kind of see the how exciting that would be. A small town, like getting a sewer system. they would be like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> They're doing a the thing in this scene again where they cut each other off straight off the bat there's some there's some disagreement between them because obviously yet yeah, dean is struggling with this book and she's like oh but come on come on just give it a try it's one of my favorite books and he's like i i don't know like I, I, he's clearly has given the book a try but it's just a bit dense and she's just but tolstoy wrote for the everyman like you know, it's not supposed to be difficult to get through and so he's going to give it a try but they they don't actually let each other get the words out or finish their sentences they do the the talking on top of each other and i hate when they do that and then i keep th i was thinking like what would i do in a situation like this where like i've shared something with someone i love and uh, care about a great deal and i want to share something that i enjoy with them and they don't like it or or vice versa like if you shared something with me yeah i was gonna I was say like, i'm like this is a very probable scenario in our future <laughs> yeah yeah, and if I, you know, if I just really couldn't get into it, I don't think we'd have a fight about it. Like, I don't think it would really get too troublesome because what you can do in a situation like that is you discuss what the person likes about about it. And then you sort of, well, what can you grasp from that? You know, the other person does not have to enjoy it. Everyone's mm -hmm. allowed to not like things, but you can still have a meaningful discussion ar around the topic, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say that they got in a fight about it. I think they, I, I think they kind of just discussed it. Yeah, and she did it, push. Yeah, no, I don't think they. They, yeah, it was a bit, a bit. I kind of wish Rory had let it go and just like, oh hmm. well, well, thank you for trying, because like he's clearly read the whole book all the way to the yeah, end. Yeah, the way where he's, he's holding gonna... it, you can see that he's almost at the end. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And for him to start all over from the beginning, like. Dude, don't That's a tall order, honey. There are lots of other books out there that I'm sure he'll enjoy more <laughs> that you also enjoy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think I would ask him to reread the book. If he had been like 10 pages in, sure. Like, okay, just mm -hmm. give it more of a shot. Or if you know that there's a turning point, like, you know, I've done that with shows with people where they're like, ooh, I don't know about this. And it's like, trust me, after like episode six, it yeah. really gets there, you know? But I wouldn't, it's not worth it to push people because then what if he resents it because he has to read it again to like mm -hmm. not upset her. So Dean proceeds to ask Rory what she's up to on Friday night. And she's like, um, dinner, obviously. <laughs> okay. And he kind of informs her basically that it's their three month anniversary. She has no idea, which surprises the heck out of me. Me too. I feel like your first boyfriend, you are like every day is like a new check mark like <laughs> yeah yeah like i i i mean i would have it down to the day of when our first kiss was like when mm -hmm. our first kiss when we first decided we were boyfriend and girlfriend you know and yeah you mark off the days <laughs> like that's it hmm. okay so he said it was the day that he gave her the bracelet but then they had the conversation after the dance like literally after the dance so to me that would have been their first day but you know yeah. if they want if they want to be that day sure Go for it, you guys. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's the thing is like he decided. He decided when it was. Clearly, there is not enough actual chat going on between these two that's about them. They're not talking about each other. I don't think they're, no, I think they're sharing it, yeah. them, their interests, but they're not actually talking about them together. So it's, it's odd. 
I don't, I'm trying to think like if I, no, I was pretty in the relationships that I was in, in high school, it was like very much like, are we boyfriend and girlfriend now? Yes. Okay. That's the day. Like it was very like, yeah. explicit and they mm-hmm. did have an explicit conversation about that after the dance. You can't just like, brrr, it's another day now. Anyway, uh, I hadn't really picked up on that until right now. And then I was like, hey, I'm annoyed. <laughs> he asks her to get out of Friday night dinner because he's planned something. Which, like, boy, why would you plan something on a day that you know she has dinner before she gets out of dinner? And then he's like, well, I work on Saturday. So you expect her to, like, cancel her plans, but you can't cancel your plans? Like, switch a shift? Mm-hmm. That annoyed me. Like, don't make plans until you can find out if she can make it or not, because now you've put her in a position where if Emily hadn't said yes, then she'd have to say no to you and then disappoint you. And then you'd be all sad and she'd be stuck in the middle feeling guilty because you made a choice without discussing it with her. Annoying. I couldn't date him. I couldn't date him. And it's like, okay, so on the one hand, good for you for taking initiative. Men and partners who plan dates, fantastic, because not everybody does right? Sometimes all the planning falls to one person in the relationship, sometimes regardless of gender, just like based on personal strengths, maybe. So yeah, cool. You get, you get points for that, but you gotta, you gotta talk to the people. Like you don't have her like Google calendar. Oh no, he does. He knows where she is. He does. (laughs) Yeah. God damn it, Dean. (laughs) And then, so Rory says, well, we could like meet at the bonfire after dinner and then she says that they sell star-shaped hot dogs which i think is confusing Very. because are they star-shaped like and flat like like round like like <laughs> flat and star-shaped and then or do they just like carve the hot dog lengthwise to be kind of like like an extruded yeah, like- star like, yeah, I, just, <laughs> just I have some, some Play-Doh some sets here that I could <laughs> straight. <laughs> yeah, so, and then, like, who's doing that? Who is carving? It's bet it's Kirk. I bet that's Kirk's job <laughs> to carve the star-shaped <laughs> hot dogs. Okay. <laughs> I want to see that. I want to know. Um, and so Rory says, yeah, okay, I'll try. I'll see what I can do. I'll try. And then we pan away to the busker man. <laughs> I Did still don't understand. Oh, yeah. Is he? Okay. Well, and as the first time you were like, nobody understands what he's doing here. Nobody. Yeah, I have. That's I the don't, point. Like, where did he just come from? Is he? Is he the composer? Oh, I have no idea who he is. No. I need to find this out. I will find out. But also, next week. don't. Look into oh, it. No, maybe I won't. It's not like a huge spoiler. Like I'm not, it's not going to be like this big dramatic thing, but um, it does get addressed at one point. So like, don't look into oh. it until later. Okay. Just in All case. All right then. Li- listeners and followers, um, if you can avoid spoilers, can you tell me ish who this guy is? Or short answer, is he the composer or not? If you know, I just, okay. Because yeah. there is one guy behind all the like, la 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 songs and the strumming. Mm. Mm. This is something I have realized about Gilmore Girls is like, it has like f- seven different versions of a la 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 Yeah, there's a waltz, there's an every, yeah. I mm-hmm. picked that up. <laughs> yes. So Rory comes home to Lorelai in the kitchen holding this box of hamburger helper, like, <laughs> like she's gonna make it. <laughs> and Rory immediately is like, no, mom, no, like, put it down. <laughs> like, uh, and Lorelai just kind of goes off on how she wants to be a cook and just like on the food channel. And she wants to do the chopping and be the BAM. <laughs> like, the BAM thing. Do you know about the BAM thing? That's that's one of the celebrity chefs. Is that Mario Batali? No, it's Emeril Lagasse. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. BAM. Yes. <laughs> I thought that Mara Batali had like a catchphrase, but it, he maybe he does, and maybe it's just not that one. But yes, Lorelai's feeling it, and so Rory is like, "Okay, we need a pan." And <laughs> Lorelai's like, "Wait, what?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's very questionable whether they actually have hamburger for the hamburger helper. She, I, Rory, this, or, this is for the first time. I feel like Lorelai in this episode. I am Lorelai. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Excellent. <laughs> Useless um, in the kitchen and just surrounded by people in love and 
<laughs> poo pooing it here, left, right, and center. <laughs> so Rory is searching through the kitchen for a pan to quite possibly make this meal out of, or in, rather. Lorelai kind of fesses up. She's like, I'm in a mood. It's this festival. And they're like, I miss Max. And they get into this kind of back and forth about how Lorelai hasn't called Max either. Like, Max hasn't called Lorelai. Lorelai hasn't called Max. And I forget the lead up to this, but she calls her um, Cleopatra, Queen of Denial, which I <laughs> adored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Rory. <laughs> and then... Rory takes this opportunity, although like the segue isn't great because Lorelai's just talked about how cranky she is about like Max and relationships and love. And she's like, well, can we get me out of Friday night dinner because it's my three month anniversary with Dean? Mm -hmm. And Lorelai's like, ha, okay, like, let's try that. And, you know, she's teasing her about it. And so Rory's like, you, you're not even going to try to help me. And she's like, oh, no, 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 I will. I'm just like, it ain't gonna happen, girl. And I have this clip. Oh, hey, Mom, uh, Rory and Dean are having their three-month anniversary on Friday. Really, Lorelai? Well, that's wonderful. I'm thrilled. Stop. <laughs> three months. Well, woohoo! Hold on, I'm going to cartmeal. Forget it. Oh, no, wait. She's telling my dad now. Why, I think they're cabbage patching. That's it. Find your own pen. <laughs> <laughs> I have resisted looking up what kind of dance cabbage patching is can you describe <laughs> that for me <laughs> um no i really couldn't i don't know what it means it's a dance oh, i think it's a dance yeah okay hold on is it like a mashed thing. potato i didn't realize it was a dance i i i thought it was just some unusual social term that i've never heard of before <laughs> oh golly here we go <laughs> a little bit of extra content for us today <laughs> we're going sure. off book people Completely off book. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm dancing Kim. And are you ready to dance? Today we're going to learn the hottest new dance to hit the scene. It's called the Cabbage Patch. Awesome dance. It's totally rad. All about isolating your rib cage and moving your arms. Let's do it. Step one, isolate your ribs to the left. Step two, circle your ribs around oh, yes. the right oh, of to course. make a circle. Step three, while you keep your ribs going around in a circle to the left, stick out your arms. Yes, we've all Step seen four, this. Circle your arms around, uh. you know, like you're in a cabbage patch. You got it? You can do it all at the same time. Put some shoulders into it. Oh, oh. Step five. <laughs> This is satire. Come on now. There's no way. Um, you know what? I'm not convinced. <laughs> it's so bad. Okay. Learn something um, new every day. It's a 1980s advice video on how to perform the Cabbage Patch. Mm. I'm skeptical. It's mixed reviews, whether it's... Okay, so these videos were made in the late 2000s as a parody for 1980s dance videos which were okay. very much like that yes. um but this particular one yeah is a late 2000s parody an Still early 21st throwback. century <laughs> <laughs> anyway so richard and emily cabbage patching um <laughs> which i adore now i really want to see that i wish i hope somewhere in the universe there's like a blooper of them off screen just like doing it yes so i love Lorelai's voice when she's pretending to be Emily. It's Me so too. good. It's so good. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's like transatlantic, like 1950s. Oh, woohoo. It is your three month <laughs> anniversary. Oh, woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> so good <laughs> oh i have to i have to point out because i noticed and i think i'm going to be noticing a lot more of these um a sudden drop in of a boom mic as lorelei leaves the kitchen and heads to go and pick up the phone there is a whoop. it just appears Ooh. from the middle of the screen just drops in uh it's it's a microphone just boom and i think there's another one a little bit later on behind uh luke Oh my oh, goodness. Wow. <laughs> wow. The um, boom mic operator needs to lay off the sauce a little bit. <laughs> I, I think maybe he was egg eggplanting? No. Egg <laughs> That's a very different dance. <laughs> Cabbage oh, patching. Different dance. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the mind reels. Him. So Emily picks up the phone and Lorelai goes from confident, sassy, hilarious, teasing woman of charisma to bumbling hot mess. She, oh, she's yeah. like, oh, oh, bleh. hi, mom. Like, bleh. She's terrified of Emily. And there is some like trauma that comes out with her every time she talks to this woman. Like, yep. both of them, which we also see with Richard later in the episode as well. Mm -hmm. She sounds like a 10 or 12-year-old um, asking her mom's permission. Like, can so-and-so stay over? Can she sleep over? Or can I stay at so-and-so's house? Like, she, mm -hmm. her voice changes yet again, and she absolutely sounds like a child until she steadies herself to sound like herself again. But then, even then, the she asks all in one go. This is how it's going to be. And blah, 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 doesn't let her get a word in. And you can... St you can tell the panic is still there. And she says, like, don't say anything until I'm done and hear me out, okay? And yeah. <laughs> and she yeah. even says, like, you're not going to like it. Like, she just lays the groundwork for it to be, yeah, like, exactly. It's not even just that she's trying to, you know, be like a 12-year-old asking for a sleepover. It's a 12-year-old asking for a sleepover when they've already been told no four times and yeah. that they made the plans to do it anyway and their mom already said yes and they're on the way to pick me up and, like... <laughs> <laughs> Like, she's, like, yeah, fully in trouble in, in her mind right now, right? And it's not even her asking about something for herself. Like, it's for Rory, who, you know, Emily and Richard would do anything for Rory. So she is a hot, hot mess. And Emily says, yes. And it feels scary <laughs> to everyone. Lorelai, <laughs> what do you mean, yes? Like, I don't. Are you like are, she won't be there and then she even goes on this like different variations and different explanations of how like she won't be there after dinner like she won't be there she's not coming it's more follow-up from what you were bringing up last time i think um where like the behavior from grandmother to granddaughter is a totally different story from mother to daughter and i think this is another hit to lorelei of like oh this is not the treatment I got. Like, if yeah. I had asked to get out of something, to have my anniversary, whatever, with, with my boyfriend, no, he would have had to come along. <laughs> he would have come yeah. along to dinner. You know, he would have been forced to, like, smarten up and show up. And you can see, you can you can see on, on her face and, and you can hear in her, yeah, in, in her continuation of going, well, she's not, she's not going to be there. Like, almost trying to convince her to change her mind back again. You know? Yeah. Like... That's how like, it felt that, for sure. It, it, it's not fair. It's not, it, they, they, there are times, and this is one of those times when Rory and Lorelai feel like sisters, that they're yes. like on the sister level. And, you know, but how come she gets this and I don't? You know, it's not fair. It's not fair this way. Especially yeah. that, that Lorelai still has to show up. Right. That's it. She <laughs> tries to get out of it. And it's like, oh, well, she's going to need help getting ready. And Emily's just like, I'll see you at seven. Like, <laughs> there's no way you're getting out of dinner. Instead of just, you know, being like, okay, well, you know what? We'll do something else for dinner. Just Richard and I. Maybe we'll go out on a date. Like, whatever. And I mean, at this point, we don't know that she has ulterior motives. But we always suspect Emily has ulterior motives when she's being agreeable about something. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was scary. It was, I was, you know, it's scary. Were you scared? <laughs> so cut to school and Tristan and this, this girl, um, the one from the dance, I think it's the same, it's the same girl. Is it? I don't think it is. This one's a brunette. Oh, I think it is. Really? I think it is. Or, or he has a type and they're very similar. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. At some point in this scene, Paris mentions Belle Watling and I think that's the girl. Oh, let me see. Somebody... Uh, somebody mentions Belle Watling. That's an actress. Or no, that's Belle a character. Wat oh, she's a prostitute. <laughs> she is a notorious prostitute, cafe owner, and a brothel madam in Atlanta, Georgia. I see. Okay. She's a good friend of Rhett Butler and Melanie Hamilton, and she's often compared to Scarlett O'Hara, though the women do not get along. Oh, Gone with the Wind. Got I it. missed that okay. part. Like she's just this, a prostitute. Yeah. This, this, <laughs> this is Paris uh, just being like way beyond me. See, because I just took it literally. I just said, this girl's name is Belle. <laughs> Belle Watling. <laughs> Paris does not just like say nice things or like neutral things. Like the way the, that phrase is biting. <laughs> you should have known that it was like <laughs> amazing. Incredible. Um, oh my. All right. Well, what a gal. 
Yeah, what a gal. Businesswoman. <laughs> Entrepreneur. <laughs> Entrepreneur. You know what? Strobe Hayden might actually respect her. <laughs> <laughs> Does not work in a hotel. The brothel. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> hey, maybe she founded Stars Hollow. We'll get there later. <gasps> oh, oh, that's so cool. It's all good. <laughs> These writers know what they're doing. They were going all in on this episode, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> so they're Tristan and not Belle are <laughs> making out on the lockers. They're just like going at it, like complete blinders on. But you know that Tristan's listening. You know yep. that he's just doing this to like get on people's nerves. She's all in. She's like, I'm having a great time. I don't care. But you know that he's just doing it to bother people. Uh, so Paris walks up and just like wants to get to her locker and they're not budging. They're not moving. And then Rory walks up and wants to get to her locker. <laughs> they're right on them. Eventually, you know, Rory like taps him on the shoulder and gets them to stop, come up for air. And they act all like, what? Like, what are you doing? And then this girl tells Paris that she needs to get bangs because she has a high forehead. I'm like, D excuse me? Did you look in the mirror? Because your forehead is the exact same. Like, they have the same forehead. I'm like, that is that is mean and catty. She also said this without looking at her. She's like looking down at her hands or something. She's not. She doesn't actually look at. Paris. I think she's, she's putting on lip gloss. So, like, yeah. She's like, yeah. At the same time, Madeline is there, and then just starts like handing out these flyers about like party at my place on Saturday, dressed to impress, <laughs> and that goes nowhere. So I don't actually remember if that's relevant for like something else or like why they included that. So maybe it is in the next episode. I've, I've written a note to keep an eye out for that because <laughs> when I did my rewatch of it, I was like, there is no party. I want to go to the party. Like, what are they yeah, doing? I want to know. Although, yeah. I want to know what they were wearing. Dressed to impress. I want to see. Especially because she says to Rory, like, oh, you should bring your boyfriend. But by Saturday, spoiler for the end of the episode, he's not her boyfriend anymore. So what goes down? I don't know. So maybe she does go to the party. I don't remember. I genuinely don't remember if this party is um, relevant or not. We'll find out <laughs> no. soon. Like, I've seen it. But like I said in previous episodes, I've seen more of the, like, holiday ones. So I've seen all of it sure. through at least twice. But then the ones that I rewatch, it's because it's, like, Christmas or Thanksgiving or, mm -hmm. you know, like, there's something to, like, I cherry pick my episodes a little bit. Or Halloween. Oh, there's such a good Halloween episode later. And so, again, we're just like, this whole episode is about people coming together, right? And so it was about yeah. Tristan and not Belle. I zoomed in on <laughs> on Rory's locker. She has okay. a bunch of things in there. Because like, this is one of the <gasps> greatest me. things about this show is that they just, they fill everything they possibly can with personality. And, and one of the things in Rory's locker is this, like, circle with like a cross out thing of it okay yeah it says like a no yeah that says baby spice so like no spice girls? no like <laughs> baby spice and like <laughs> oh come on now rory like i i get it you're a you know you're a an intellectual i suppose but come on now that's that's not very feminist of you <laughs> we fair we accept baby spice fair. Here. and then tristan says something like uh oh to be young and in love which Ew, I yeah what up. a gross line i i know right everything he says is gross <laughs> everything is so gross um it's not actually quoted from anywhere that i could find but it just it's just one of those phrases that shows up in like poetic something or other um, okay <laughs> paris says something like Elizabeth Elizabeth Barrett Browning would uh, yes. be would be like bashing her head against the wall right now or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love that she brings up Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Um she's the one who she wrote um How Do I Love Thee? Let Me Count the Ways. Blah 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 blah. blah gotcha. Blah, 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 blah. And her poetry, I adore her poetry. Oh, um, okay. It, it's it's quite heavy and it's almost it's okay. It's passionate, I think. I was about to say it's erotic. It's not erotic. <laughs> but oh, okay. she could easily write erotic poetry. But it's passionate. And there's another another it's a sonnet of hers that I'm, I implore you all to look up. When our two souls. I think something like when our two souls meet and ascend into heaven. Something, something, something. Whatever. It's beautiful. There's like breaking into fire and wings and things. And it's Oh. It yeah, it's really powerful Drama. stuff. Drama. Um, I love that. Yeah. 
Oh, hey, it's Editing Jenny. The poem I'm talking about is her Sonnet 22 that starts, When our two souls stand up erect and strong. And it's beautiful. That I makes that me think of <laughs> RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like outfit reveals and like just like big dramatic like. <laughs> like yeah. Like that. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Amazing. <laughs> okay, so the reason Tristan's girlfriend looked familiar to me is because she's in the pilot episode. She's one of the girls doing her nails in Ruri's classroom. <laughs> okay. That's why I was like, well, we, we know her. We've seen her. And she I thought it was hollow. the girl at the dance. It was, it was one of the girls who's, I think it's the one who has the line, she's doing the assignment. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was that one. And I'm 90% sure without actually reading. Um, her name is Summer. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Not Belle Watling. <laughs> Not Belle Watling. <laughs> we learn so much with this show. Yeah. <laughs> so then we cut to the Independence Inn. Lorelai walks into the kitchen and Suki and Jackson are going at it as well. Going at it makes it sound <laughs> a lot more hot and heavy than it was. They're just like smooching. And <laughs> that's exactly what Lorelai says. Like, okay, go back to smooching now because they're like, oh, we're mm -hmm. talking about preserves, making preserves, tomato sauce. Jackson's going to make some things with fruit. Like they just get all mm -hmm. awkward and giddy and bumbling. And, and Lorelai's just like, oh, gross, stop it. And the most insulting part about all of this is that the coffee has now been made. And mm -hmm. usually Lorelai gets there and there's coffee right? And I'm sure it's not like an explicit expectation, but it's just like a nice thing that like usually happens. And I'm sure on any other day in any other situation, if there was no coffee, it'd just be like, oh, okay, there's no coffee. But it's, there's no coffee because she's like making out with Jackson when the whole town is like making out with each other and everybody's all lovey-dovey and Lorelai's just like, Rawr, the stupid in the festival. Kitchen. Yeah, right? It's keeping me from my coffee. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I felt very deeply for her in that moment. I was like, oh, girl, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> sorry you're going through this right now. I, she goes to the front desk and Michelle is on the phone. Oh, my God. This, like, sickly, like, simpering conversation. Like, oh, my goodness. Who is he talking to? His Who mother, is on the other end of that line? line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need right? to know who this is she. Like it sounds like he's talking to a dog. The way you're, yeah. that you're like, oh my sweet little boot, like my sweet little baby. I'm gonna give you so many big, like big <laughs> stick bones tonight. Oh, you're gonna be so happy. I can't wait. Oh, please wait for me. Like it'll be worth it. They're so gross. It's so <laughs> gross. Nobody actually wants to be spoken to like that, right? I don't think so. Like at least put it in a text so I don't hear the tone. <laughs> 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 I don't. Nobody wants that. Keep it inside. Um, but I, I don't know. She seemed happy with it. Or he. They seemed happy with it. Although he called her ma chérie. So we're going to assume that it's a, a woman, I suppose. I don't know. I make no assumptions. So ma chérie is going to have quite the evening this weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> with the eggplant dance. <laughs> Awesome. Oh no. Oh, how many times can I work that into this episode? <laughs> it's a challenge. Oh, oh god. Okay. We're at one. What's the we're at one emanation of the egg. <laughs> <laughs> god. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> Michelle, even Michelle is speaking in extra flowery language after the phone call. You're in a very good mood. And he says, um, my heart is light. The world is fine. Uh, <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> Have you had a lobotomy? What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> what well, is let's, this coming I, from Michelle? <laughs> this is pre-2001. So maybe well, it was. <laughs> maybe it was. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> the good old days. Oh, yeah. Oh, to be 10. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> so, yeah, he gets on the phone and Lorelai's like, so how's mom? And then he just basically, yeah, he tells her, like, the 
I'm not going to verbally spar with you. Like as much fun yeah. as it normally is, I'm not going to, I'm not doing it today. I'm in a good mood and I'm just not going to do it. And Lorelai is basically like, screw this. I'm going to get coffee. I, mm -hmm. I have not had enough coffee for this BS happening in my life right now. And off she goes. You know to loop. This reminds Ooh. me of this reminds me of something. So if we're gonna pick up on some like old school English literature, and the the the, the founding of Stars Hollow, uh, the story being fairly similar to a Romeo and Juliet, Michel here and his whole like persona change. It sounds like he's like under the influence of something. <laughs> yeah. Not in, not anything in our real world, but he sounds like he might be under magical influence. I That's think it. this is this is my guess. I think this is intended to be a nod to something like a Midsummer Night's Dream, where Puck goes around and sprays like the juice, squeezes the juice in the lover's eyes, and they wake up and they fall in love with the wrong partner. You know, it's a oh, it's a whole farce. But but they are so like over the top with the romanticism and it feels like a lot of these people so like love is in the air but it feels like they're under like a magical influence spell that's it they've thing. all had you know the founder's day punch which is actually a love potion and yeah. lorelei like missed it she didn't get any and yeah he sounds fully under the influence of a love potion yeah it's like oh i love you so much like oh i cannot wait to see you like it's too much yeah <laughs> And he probably went back for seconds, is what he did. And that's why <laughs> Lorelai didn't get any, because there was just enough for everybody. Michelle got a double dose. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she's on her way to Luke's, and this star, this giant silver star, comes like crashing down in front of her and like shatters all over the ground. Fully mm -hmm. would have like conked her out, or Lovely. at least hurt very badly. And mm -hmm. The guy rushes over like, that's never happened before. I don't know what this is. Like, so yes, there's fully, the whole town has this like love spell. And then she has the curse. She has the curse. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. At that point, I would absolutely be thinking like, I am cursed. Someone has put a hex on me. What is going on? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Pretty sure you've already had that thought this week. Or at yes, least I have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, she gets to Luke's. And she, you know, it's like, oh, I'm grumpy. I want coffee, blah, blah, blah. But they don't get too much into the reasons yet. And then Patty and Taylor are arguing over the bonfire and the purpose of the bonfire. And they are two very different accounts. Taylor says that the, they built the fire to, like, unalive themselves because of the tragedy of not being able to be together. And Miss Patty is like, they just needed to stay warm. Like, it was nighttime. They were cold. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they argue about that. Luke has a really short, almost throwaway line, but it's a really important one, I think, because it can sort of be read two ways. Lorelai comes in, expresses all about her day and how she was narrowly missed being speared by a following star um, and just how things are not going well. She says something like, uh, how, how's your day? And he says, it's looking pretty good now, which... Could oh yeah, like it's... compared to you. Oh, it's look at my day is fine compared to yours, but also you're here now. Now that you're my here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he asks kind of like about her mood and she says something about just like maybe I'm bipolar. That's all the rage these days. <laughs> and when Patty and Taylor are arguing about the festival, Lorelai just has like this outburst of like, can anybody just talk about anything else in this town and then <laughs> i think it's luke who says like ah oh, she's bipolar and mm -hmm. miss patty is like oh, but she's so young like yeah. that's an age related thing like it is not <laughs> there it was there was no understanding 24 years no, ago not no a, not a the early 2000s <laughs> were a rough time for the mental health folks and i'm pretty sure bipolar isn't even a term that's used anymore like that's how far it's mm -hmm. it's come how many changes has <laughs> already been since this filming so ultimately Lorelai does say it's the the love and it's annoying and the festival and it's the worst and luke is like yes finally yes thank you and then he goes on this rant about the festival and it's 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 oscar worthy it's, i just i love it so much 
I don't know what is wrong with me. This is a beautiful festival. People should be enjoying it. It's a crazy festival based on a nutty myth about that. two lunatics who in all probability did not even exist. And even if they did, probably dropped dead of diphtheria before age 24. <laughs> the town of Stars Hollow probably got its name from the local dance hall prostitute. Two rich drunk guys who made up the story to make it look good on a poster. You are full of hate and loathing and I gotta tell you I love it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I adore that. And he proceeds to say, it's so good to have someone to share this hate with. But he says it with like a smolder. The way that he just like gets down on the counter and looks in her eyes and he like growls it at her. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh my God. Okay. Yes. Yes. I hate it too. Like, <laughs> it's terrible. But it's, well, what's great is that he like, up until that point, he was just sort of enjoying her, complaining about her day, getting it all out, blah, 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 blah. And then as soon as um, Miss Patty and Taylor, sort of, as soon as they get somewhat involved in like, oh, what did she say about the festival? What did she say about this? Luke covers for her with the she's bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> but he does that instead of starting a fight. Like, it, like we're not going to start a fight. So they're already... Taylor and Miss Patty are already fighting between each other. Lorelai is not in the state, in a good state, to have any kind of civilized conversation. So he comes in, he, he's like the mediator between them. Let's cover this, let's calm this down, quell this. And then he comes back and I think he realizes that cynicism, well, that he does so well, is just the tonic she ordered. That's what yep. I've written down there. <laughs> and oh. yeah, I, I, my, <laughs> my other note here is, yeah, intimate. And his face oh my is God. just... So like he, I, I don't, I don't know what words he could have said, but he, he may well have just said like the raunchiest, sexiest line. It ever. was crazy. It was mm. like, you can eggplant dance over here anytime you want to. Be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah. Shirts made. <laughs> um, yes. Anyway. Uh, yeah, it was intense and mm -hmm. like mm, yeah and Lorelai somehow does not fall off the stool she just <laughs> keeps talking like that didn't happen and then this happens this happens and ruins it for everybody hey tomorrow if you have time I'm planning on despising everyone who says hey how's it going you're on <sighs> hey how's it going oh no that's just too easy Rachel Rachel. You're Rachel? <gasps> mm -hmm. Like full body. So, like, that was, was crazy full, acting. A full 180 in his like ease. He goes from just yeah. smooth and like creamy and velvety just to just like frozen. Oh my God. Brilliant. And like his shoulders droop. It's like he loses control of like all of his posture and like his muscles. He's just like, what the heck am I looking at right yeah. now? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So. Rachel is back. Yay. She's come from but We haven't the... we haven't actually seen her before. So this is the first nope. we're actually seeing her. There's something about her that bothers me. And maybe it's that her like curls are too perfect. Um because <laughs> that as somebody who has I mean right now it's a hot mess, but that's the point. Like you sleep on it once. You get off a plane and your hair doesn't look like that. My curly hair people out there, you know what I'm talking about. That is <laughs> freshly out of the shower. Like, you just diffused it. You, like, plopped it. You've got all of the curly girl method going. You've been doing the curly girl method for, like, months. That's that kind of curl. You do not have the curly girl method in the Middle East. And mm. when you're doing, like, photojournalism in the, like, desert, that's not desert hair. It just drives me insane because it feels too perfect. And mm -hmm. it, it just makes it also, it takes some of the volume away. Like when it's that like coiled, it, it just, it kind of like really tight and close, mm -hmm. which I think she would look stunning with more body to her hair. It's a very like, and um, yeah, I don't like it. I find it very distracting when she talks. I'm just like, ugh, the curls. And so Rachel is back. Luke is gobsmacked. He doesn't shy away from saying some of the things that he's thinking. Like, guess my True. postcard was lost. In, in the mail or whatever, uh, which is ballsy. Like, good for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
uh, even though he's tripping over himself, he's still got like his sense of of like dignity a little bit in terms mm -hmm. of his own feelings and expectations. Yeah, because it wasn't totally clear the last time we heard about Rachel. It wasn't totally clear how Luke was dealing with it, other than he he accepted back the jacket, or the the sweater, the sparkly hoodie. But we don't actually know from him how he's doing. Is he moving along? Does he? feel some pain from her? What was their relationship actually like between them? Because we know it from secondary sources. We know it how how Miss Patty saw it and how Suki saw it. But like, Luke is a man of few words and we don't know exactly what was going on. So I we get the impression, I think, that there's, you know, the, the, the way that they spoke, maybe they, maybe they were quite clear with each other in those days, how they felt. And so he is He's open with her and he's very open with her real feelings. Yep. And um, so when she comes in and, and Lorelai turns around, and it's like, you're Rachel. And she's like, yep, I'm Rachel. But she says it like so easy breezy. Like everybody there seems to be shocked that she's there. And I'd be like, why, 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 who, who are you? Why are you? How do you know who I am? What have you heard? Like, I would have been like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes, I'm Rachel. Like it would have been a lot less like oh yeah i'm rachel what's up like <laughs> i don't know well i i wonder if she already has an expectation of encountering that from somewhere like stars hollow because that's where she oh, wanted fair. to get away from so if she was there for a long time i don't know if, if she grew up there i think they grew up together yes um but she knows exactly that like everyone knows everyone and she's gonna come back everyone's gonna know me so i feel like she's prepared for that yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. And so Luke, Luke is is struggling to still find his words a little bit. So you know, she says, "Hey, you look good," and he's like, "You look," uh, and he just can't bring himself to say anything because he probably also doesn't know what to say. Like, do I say she looks good because she does? Because her looking good is complicated for me. Like, what do I what do I, uh, what do I say? Mm -hmm. Um, and so Lorelai ends up kind of finishing the sentence. He's like, "He means you look good." And by the way. I'm Lorelai. And or Luke tells her that, you know, she works at the Independence Inn and they talk about that for a little bit. And then this is where <laughs> Lorelai starts to get a little shaky too, because she, you know, it's Rachel who she was already jealous and intimidated by without even having and, met her. And unfortunately, Rachel is really nice and yeah. like fully compliments her in a really genuine and easy way by saying like, oh, wow, that must be a pretty big job. Like, yeah. The fr the first time in weeks and weeks and in episodes that anyone has ever like really noticed Lorelai's job as being something that takes a lot of effort and is something pretty impressive. You know, compare that to the oh she's working at a motel from last week's episode, right? You know, yeah, <laughs> the, the derision. But um, oh no, Rachel's nice too. No, well they did say they did say everybody said she was really great. So they were not lying about that. <laughs> and so Lorelai goes into this like babble mode about the coffee machines and how they're a hot mess and it's just been so much work and such a disaster. And then it's like, stop, like it's coffee machines. What were you doing in the Middle East? She tries for some cool, flattering conversation and it 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 works, but it just drives her in not in the way she wanted to go. <laughs> Because, no. unfortunately, Rachel is very impressive. Yeah, she's documenting. She's doing a photojournalism piece on the violence in Palestine and Israel, which felt very timely. Very, yep. very timely. Um, and to to document the, the violence and how the violence has impacted the families living there. And Laura lies like, okay. Coffee makers, okay. So, yeah. So she goes home and is like banging her head against the wall, basically. She's helping Rory get ready for her date. And she's just being like, she's so embarrassed. And Rory is being so sweet. She yeah. says the nicest thing. She's like, well, you, you spent so much time picking out those coffee makers. Like she's validating and acknowledging that like it was a big thing for you. And it's like, oh, sweetie. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> she's so nice. Lorelai is, she's embarrassed that she said it in front of Rachel and she denies that she's embarrassed that she was like that in front of Luke, but she was like that because of Luke, you know? And so she's yeah. still kind of skirting around the reason and she doesn't really want to admit it, but like she, if she didn't have feelings for Luke, she wouldn't have 
done that and exactly. been so awkward. Yeah, it wouldn't have been a problem to start with. She wouldn't have even cared what Rachel thought about her. Yeah, Boom. that's it. And even if she did do something babbling and awkward, because like I do that at work all the time. I meet somebody new and I just like go off on something and I'm like, please stop. Please don't. Don't <laughs> talk anymore. But then I'm able to like walk away and be like, gee, that was weird. And then move on with my day. I don't No, Hold on. Let me carefully choose my words here. I do feel shame and embarrassment, but I don't like... Sometimes I do spiral. <laughs> not, it's not that. It's not the same. <laughs> it's not for the same reasons. It's not the same. Okay? <laughs> so, ultimately, she boils it down to missing Max. Mm -hmm. She's like, I just, I just miss Max. Like, all of these people, all of a sudden, there's just people and boyfriends and girlfriends and lovers and whatever everywhere. And I miss Max. And, and so, as I mentioned, they're helping Rory get ready. Rory's wearing this really sweet, like, hot pink dress, which looks she so looks nice amazing. on her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I loved this part where she pulls out two cardigans and asks which one to wear. And Lorelai's advice is like, well, where are you going? Because you don't want to clash with the decor, which I actually loved mm -hmm. because uh, I would do something like that. I would think about that. Be like, well, if I'm going here, like, I can't just like this. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was cute and fun. Definitely. Definitely. I, I I have so little experience in like traditional dates. Like I I did not date. I think maybe I've been on like two recognizable dates in my life. Never really did the date thing. So any of these scenes where they're actually like preparing for the date and like how are you going to behave and how are you going to get dressed right for it? And I live for those because I can sort of be vicarious through that and I can get questions answered that I might have hypothetically had and I get to, you know I, I get to enjoy it through them and uh I love these little getting ready pre-date scenes and then Lane shows up like everybody is just everywhere all the time and Lane is literally <laughs> there for all of five minutes but and so I guess it's just like living next door to or like super close to your bestie and small town life and people are just like I'm just gonna pop over to Rory's for a second before her date like it's <laughs> so funny and it makes no sense to me because that's not at all like I live in a fairly large city and that is not how life is in normal life. I wish. I, don't know. I wish right? I could how cute. stroll down the street and pop in, say hi. Right? Oh my, I would cry. <laughs> Speaking of which, today my almost four-year-old said, uh, when I'm taller, I'd like to go visit Jenny. Oh. And I was like, oh, okay. And she's like, yeah, like when I'm your age, I'm going to go visit Jenny. And I was like, sounds great. You go right ahead. Yep. When you're taller, <laughs> that's it. That is it. That's what's keeping you. <laughs> not being three years old, but... Yes. <laughs> and yes. So she said that in the car this morning. <laughs> it was kind of annoying because she was mad at me. And then she's oh, like, right. Whoa. <laughs> so it was like, I want Jenny. <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> That's what I get for being the auntie. Cool aunt. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mom is bust. So Lane comes over and Rory looks beautiful. And the first thing Lane says is, I have to stop hanging out with you because you're making my life seem too pathetic. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> like yes you do <laughs> yep been there i know that feeling good lord because as i've just uh, finished saying i was i was not doing any dating i was not speaking with any boys in high school i just had mega crushes that just took over mm -hmm. my life i wasn't even speaking to them and lisa was doing the fun stuff in my eyes anyway very fun well she had like well <laughs> Well, there were some like, dark ages in the middle. Sure. It was like, it was fun the... at first, and then it was really terrible, and, and then it was fun again. Even in the more tame ways of like, I don't know, just the way that you, you dressed and you were experimental in your clothes and you just sort of, you just had fun with like being yourself and being seen. And I was just like, oh, no, <laughs> I'm so boring. What is this? Oh my God, no. Her life is so cool and she's so pretty and she does all that. Here we go. We're getting to the real juicy nitty gritty. <laughs> this is what long-term friendships can be sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't remember feeling any of those things. I <laughs> um, just remember everything being terrible. So great. Excellent. So Lane is there with her tragic life and they ask her rory asks her if she's gonna go to the bonfire maybe she can like meet up with them after um after the date I just need to pause again because <laughs> <laughs> lane's tragic life even lane is having more romantic <laughs> encounters than i am <laughs>
Would we call this a romantic <laughs> encounter? It's 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 with the intention so. of being set up with a boy. I had nothing like that. Nothing like that. I would have Fair. adored if somebody set me up with anybody, even if it's a terrible, like not even touching hands family date. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> parade it was like <laughs> they were doing drills like it was crazy <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> rory asks lane if they're gonna go to the she's going to the bonfire and she said yes i've been set up again and i've got this clip here oh honey yes i'm going to the festival and would you like to know why uh-oh my mother has once again set me up another future doctor a future chiropractor i think she's losing confidence in my prospects <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine Mrs. Kim there being like, oh no, that, like we're shooting too high at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> chiropractor, still good, still medicine. Like, <laughs> she'll be paired up with a podiatrist anytime soon. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I, I also like imagining, like, well, she's what, like 16 years old? So these yeah. guys themselves wouldn't be more than 17 years old. And like, the kinds of people who are like, yes, I'm going to be a chiropractor. Or whatever. <laughs> At 16, he's so certain he's going to be a chiropractor. Like some people oh God. might have had that in mind, but like. His parents were looking at his grades being like, all right, chiropractor for you. <laughs> like, we're not going to med school, are we? <laughs> Still going to do something. So. We're going to go through Lorelai's night now. So Lane wants to like hang out with Lorelai instead of going on this date. And Lorelai's like, I am going to Hartford. Sorry about it, kid. And she shows up at the door. She's kind of like hovering on the doorstep, doesn't know where to put her coffee cup, puts it in her purse, and the door swings open. And it's Emily. And they have this bizarre exchange. Like, how did you know I was here? Like, did, were you waiting? It's just this, this whole back and forth again where Lorelai is the one who's kind of harping on it now. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's been Emily harping on something, but she just kind of keeps being like, "What?" but the door is 10 feet thick. And like, I don't understand. And Emily's like, I don't, I don't know what you want me to say right now. Like, I just, I heard something. I opened the door. Like, can we move yeah. on, please? <laughs> this is the first hint that Lorelai is uncomfortable. Well, like, it's both of them, because they do this, we've already seen them do this so often. But it's like they're both determined to start the night off. She hasn't even stepped in the door, but they're both determined to start the night off in a kerfuffle, you know? Like, you can't just have a, hey, and like a couple of words and then, you know, get to the table, right? Or like get to the couch and then start talking. No, they need to start the weird and the questioning on the yeah. doorstep, like barely even over the threshold. Like <laughs> Right? Yeah, and that's it. Neither of them will allow the other person to exist without this tension and awkwardness and <laughs> squabbling and yeah. And so Emily goes into the kitchen. Lorelai goes into the lounge sitting room place. And again, she's so uncomfortable. She's like babbling to Richard. She, he's giving like one word, half word answers, like barely acknowledging. She's picking up the figurines. She's knocking them over. And Richard is like, Lorelai, would you just sit down? So she's like messing up the figurines. She sits down. She's going to have a drink. She offers to make one for Richard as well to see if he like needs a top up or whatever. And he makes this comment about how you only have one drink before dinner. Propriety, of course. Uh, and then Emily comes back in. They're talking about how great it was for Emily to allow Rory to not attend tonight because of the three month anniversary. And Emily is like surprisingly on board with the concept like she seems surprisingly what's the word that i'm looking for understanding i guess of like the the importance for this for rory uh because she says like three months uh, for a girl her age is is a, quite an accomplishment and like it's really important and blah 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 blah. and then she just goes for the jugular at this point mm -hmm. like laura like when was the last time you had a relationship that long or something like that and it's just like ouch like mm -hmm. that, that was not I necessary I've been enjoying Emily in this episode right up until this point. Why oh, you gotta do that? Always with the jabs. And then the doorbell rings and Chase Bradford arrives. <laughs> oh my God. I wrote in my notes, who the F is this loser? <laughs> <laughs> and I was so, and I like, I even wrote like, why do we, the audience, automatically hate him? 
Like, what is it about him that we just automatically hate? He's smarmy. He comes off like he's a little bit affected. Like, Mm. he's just, he's not obviously offensive like Rune. But he has a certain, there's a snobbiness. He's like an air about him that he's putting himself on to be a certain person. He's very phony. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so immediately, oh, Emily, it's not genuine it just feels gross it's icky yeah it is there's it's the feeling because he doesn't actually say anything that's offensive it's just his whole it's like his demeanor yeah. and his tone and like eventually he starts to actually like say words that you're just like god stop talking but right <laughs> but just like straight off the bat we're just like, it's like he watched a movie about how wealthy people behave <laughs> and then he's trying to do it maybe he's an alien and thinks, like, they're like, okay, let's be like the people. And now let's be, okay, people are like this. It's so subtle, but it's horrible. And Richard is, like, not okay. He is just like, who is this man in my house, yeah. like, on my weekend? You're going to eat at my table? Emily, what have you done? Yeah, what I love that he's it? even too much for Richard. Like, he is yes. just above and beyond. And I like, I like that we actually get richard in a state of just like this is outside of my allowance of conceit basically (laughs) yeah he reminds me of like all of these young i'm gonna bring up rupaul's drag race again okay brilliant so we always have the seasons right so there's like every season is a new cast of queens and they come in and they all have this like arrogance right? Like, I have to prove myself. I have to be the best. I have to, you know, and so he, Chase, feels like the ones that are like, I have to be a certain way to prove myself, to get my footing, to like impress the older generations or the older people who have the money, who are already comfortable and confident in this world, right? And then Drag Race All-Stars comes in and it's the same queens and they've come back and they're all just like comfortable now. They all, first of all, they've all had a lot of plastic surgery. Everybody comes (laughs) back like, fillers like it's hilarious um <laughs> but the difference between the like arrogance and it comes from a place of of lack of confidence right and not that's feeling it. like you have your place in the world and that's where chase is he's like putting on this like these airs of superiority and and success and he just, just it's so off-putting mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and there's such a big difference between the shows where it's like you know top chef versus top chef masters where the masters mm-hmm. and they're doing it for charity and they already have have their big names and they're established and they're just doing it for fun and there's like camaraderie and it's easy and it's whatever and then top chef it's like ego and macho and like i need to show that i'm the best and he's doing that but in like a subtle more subtle mm-hmm. way and it's revolting he says to lorelei like oh i'm so sad that your daughter couldn't be here tonight i adore children You're like ew She's not a child. She's not like, what do you think she was going to do? Like come up and sit on your lap? Do you have candy in your pocket? Like you're disgusting. (laughs) Oh my God. And and he says it in a way like, I want you to give me children. Like in just this way. Like he says it again a little bit later where he was talking about like the schools where he was like picking his locale. He says it in a way like all the women want men to give them lots of babies. So I'm going to mention how much I love babies and I'm going to (laughs) do an eggplant dance and put a baby in her. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> it will come up at least once more. I am going to just... So, um, Lorelai asks for an aside, or as they say in another show that I watch, I, I'm really enjoying bringing in my own references. In Glow Up, they say conflab. Mm-hmm. I hate that. I hate that word. I, I've always... <laughs> Heard it as confab, like confabulation, but it's also sometimes like accepted as conflab. And yeah. that is just like a, that's it's a disgusting old word. English, like old school British thing. Is it a British show? Glow up? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. No. And well, we yeah, yeah, yeah. It is in the UK. Yeah. Yes. Conflab. That's, that's as far <laughs> as I know. <laughs> flab is just like the word flab is in there. And it's just, it sounds <laughs> flabby. It's just not a nice word. So Lorelai and Emily go to have a conflab. And then Emily drops this line saying that, like, I don't understand what the problem is. He's got, you know, he's got money. He's successful. He has good breeding. (sighs) (sighs) Oh, my God, Emily. The two peas in a pot. Like, oh, that's so gross. I think this is where Lorelai is, like, 
pointing at her or she does something. There's some kind of a physical expression and she's like pointing, pointing yes, directly, yeah. doing a jab at Emily. And Emily goes, put that finger down. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. And like, it's, I like that this, we can have arguments between them but some episodes will take the more humorous and silly ridiculous route rather than the like yeah. heavy duty from last time so i'm really enjoying this and and then once again she takes a dig at lorelei's track record and her dating mm -hmm. history because first of all she says that maybe he's less controversial than your usual choices and then she says just think about it your 16 year old daughter is out on her three-month anniversary date when was the last time you had a relationship that lasted that long and again she's just like so mean it's a seriously low blow the um, lowest of yep but it is it's the pattern that we learned about from Suki all those episodes ago or a few episodes ago yeah really it seems yeah it seems like Lorelai really does cut off at two months, two and a half months. When was the last time she made it to three months? I don't know. But also, let's keep in mind that her parents didn't even know she had been dating Max Medina, and that had been two months. And then you think, like, at the three-month mark, she would magically just be like, hey, mom and dad, I'm dating somebody. Like, she right. may have, without oh, yeah. even having told her. We know yeah. she hasn't, but Emily doesn't know for sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, it was horrible and rude, and I'm sorry, but we don't want three months of of chase nobody wants three months of chase we don't want three minutes of chase. <laughs> so i'm gonna just talk about the dinner and then we're gonna move on to rory's date so at dinner he asks if she's in the dar because that's where he came from he came from uh, emily's friend's son who's like back in town and so emily's in the dar the daughters of the american revolution and did you not know that i have a, I didn't have a clue <laughs> Okay. There's a lot that just goes way over my head. <laughs> so it's this like socialite club and they organize fundraising and they're, I think, possibly the ones who organize the like coming out parties, the like balls and the debutante balls and all of that. Yes, exactly. I'm pretty sure. But they, yeah, the Daughters of the American, the DAR, it's like Emily's counterparts oh, and right. they all are just rich and they organize fundraisers and they keep have themselves very busy with all sorts of things. And yeah, so Emily's friend from the DAR, it's her son who's moved back to Hartford. So he asks Lorelai if she's in the DAR and she's like, nope, D-A-R-N, darn. And everybody's just like crickets. And I'm like, oh, that was cute. <laughs> Lorelai, Lorelai really knows how to be moronic right yes like <laughs> yeah <like>, wow <laughs> i love that though because like i would say it and then just like on purpose though. like you know like you say it yes. to get oh, the yeah. like groan right mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. what it's for and nobody groans and you're like oh guys i'm being like ironic i'm being i'm being a parody of myself like can not everybody see this right now and people are like oh she's really like she's not funny <laughs> you but you don't get it <laughs> okay Emily is asking Chase like all about his work and it's so tedious and boring and this is where he's saying that he can choose his locale and that's what he was like he it's just so boring and tedious how he's talking about oh I thought about New York but then Hartford has everything else that New York has without all the people like he's just awful <laughs> at one point he talks about um company loyalty like uh <laughs> oh you you know all about company loyalty richard and he gives him this smile richard's face he's not even he's, like angry he's just totally what yeah it. he's like who is this clown like what is going on right now mm -hmm. and yeah i wrote down richard is not having it he is so annoyed and i can only imagine what is going through his head him being like oh god what if i have to have dinner with him all the time like what exactly. if this is oh my god like i can't do mm -hmm. this i can't do this he's asking for more meat and like he's just he's just he asked it for another drink earlier, and Laurel is like, what happened to no extra drinks? And he's like, we've got company, we're celebrating. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, yes! Oh yeah, actually, um, I, I wrote that down, because uh, it's another moment of talking about a celebration, and celebrating things, and deciding what you celebrate, and like, rules go out the window when there's a celebration, and thing like, normalcy does not exist when there's a celebration on, and some celebrations are, you know, are annual, you know, like the celebration, the Stars Hollow celebration. Some of them are really, really important to teenagers. 
like a three month anniversary. Yep. Really important. And so they one of them marks it and the other one forgets about it. And then another one happens just on the spot. Like, okay, well, there's a guest, it's a celebration, and we're having a second drink. Yep. And and so then um Chase continues and he starts talking about how he's made a death model in on his computer. And he can pinpoint the date of somebody's death by asking them, but like within a few days, just by asking them a few simple questions. And again, he like brings Richard into it being like, you know, all about like blah, blah, blah. And Richard's like, no, I'm a, I'm a people guy. I am a client contact, man. I do not relate to you at all, sir. Please stop trying. Mm -hmm. And the thing and is, this guy, this guy might have like the, the face or the, the, the pretense of well-mannered and well-bred and accomplished and intelligent and everything everybody wants. But what he is actually lacking is real social skills. Yes, because, a thousand percent. Dude, read the room. This is not yeah. the time to be doing that. And like an, an actually impressive person who is intelligent and smart and is intellectual and whatever, they can include other people in the room in a meaningful way. They also know how to make a conversation go to like both ways, always. So I think it's really neat that we have this this example of a guy who like on paper and even like in person, in presence, could be exactly what Emily had in mind. But even she starts recognizing that like, wow, this guy is not even impressing me. So Get he awkward. strikes me as the kind of guy who like would put up this appearance like in person, right? And then go online onto like women's Instagram accounts and tear them down and say all these horrible mean things about them. He's almost giving off like but I'm a nice guy, like mm -hmm. kind of vibes. Like, why don't I get the girl? Because I'm a nice guy. I said all the right things and I said it in a certain way and I impressed her dad. And like, I had, I said all the right things instead of like being the right person. Mm -hmm. Like he's very much giving off that where it's mm -hmm. like, I am putting on this persona of who I think could get laid. <laughs> I, who I'm told, who I'm told by like, yes. the masters, the master men of this is how you do it. This is how this you is how you do the eggplant dance. <laughs> this is the eggplant dance manual. He read <laughs> the manual or he watched the YouTube videos. Um, but no, the actual eggplant dance. Um, that's a different channel. Um, <laughs> a different book i don't um yeah it's 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 really as though he read the instruction manual but doesn't actually have it innate mm -hmm. charisma and character yeah and he's very much giving off the like when he leaves there would say all these like snide horrible degrading things about lorelei because she wasn't interested in him and he would yeah. just be like vicious about her after having put on this air like he scares me a little bit because he, it just feels so forced you know and like mm -hmm. you don't actually see what's really happening in his head yeah so lorelei is like oh mom like ask him please and this is where lorelei is like yes here i can finally throw this back in emily's face because this is so creepy and morbid and she's like please mom ask me i, I wish i'd actually gotten a clip of this because she's he's like no no lorelei i have to be in front of a computer i'm no creskin <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> and emily laughs along with it and both richard and lorelei are like oh my god <laughs> It was, oh ew, is he so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so Emily suggests that they like break up the dinner and that Chase and Lorelai like go into the sitting room for a brandy or something. And he goes, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fingers, <laughs> the fingers, it's just like <laughs> <The fingers. laughs> <laughs> describe it like what? it's like, like over the keyboard, top like yeah, yeah. Cre just creepy, like the curly finger <laughs> i hate it <laughs> and then laura lies like i'm just gonna go powder something i'm just gonna something. go I'll be right. yeah <laughs> i'm gonna go uh and then she goes up to her room and starts sneaking out the window and the like perfect moment she's like one leg out the window like foot on the windowsill caught red-handed richard opens the door and she's like hi daddy like i fully. love that moment 
she's like, oh, okay, so, like, I realize that this is probably giving, like, really big flashbacks for you right now and, like, possibly triggering, like, memories of this happening. And I'm sorry that we fought. And I I love you. And I can't go back down there. He's boring. <laughs> It's a really nice, like, very quick and very entertaining, amusing, like, unraveling of all of the recent events. All of the, like, the fighting and the arguments and everything that has come up. And Richard could be there and be like, well, no, that's not what I meant. But he doesn't. <laughs> He's like, she can and, be and free from this evening. I I can be free from this evening. <laughs> Let's just... Yeah. And like Lorelai could have taken it somewhere too. Like, mom always disrespects me. And this is so, like, she didn't ask. And like, she could have taken it to like a very, like, explosive place as well. Mm -hmm. But she was just like, daddy, he's boring. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just, he fully, like, I cheered, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like, Emily, she's not down here. And it's like, yes. <laughs> and she goes, thank you, daddy. And then runs away. And it's so cute. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rory has been on her date with Dean at this fancy restaurant. And it's like the cutest thing ever. It really is. I felt like it's kind of the reverse of Rory's Donna Reed night. This is Dean oh, yeah. doing his, like, I can take you out. Because I'm, you know, the, the husband, the man of the house. And I get to take my, my pretty lady right. along with me. So I yeah. thought that was really sweet. Yeah, and he's the one that has the job. He makes money. I mean, it's, you know, grocery store money, but he's still just like, <laughs> you deserve to have whatever you want tonight. And they order her three different kinds of pasta because she couldn't choose. And he's like, you shouldn't have to choose. Like, imagine getting spoiled like that. Like, he is spoiling her in yeah. the sweetest way. And she's just like, I I like this. Like, this mm -hmm. is nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you can tell at this point, like, by this point, She's been thinking a lot about, like, this is three months. I, I'm getting this impression of, like, investment into relationship and how fun and, like, involving relationships can be from her. Anyway. Yeah, and she just talks about how, like, everything about the date is so cute and delicious and, like, they're having such a nice time. And she says, like, even the Coke tastes better here. And he thinks that she's <laughs> making fun of him. But she's like, no, I genuinely, like, everything could just feel different and better. And, like, it's so good and amazing. And I love the three-month anniversary. And this is awesome. Dean is just looking at her, like, with such adoration. And it's so mm -hmm. cute. And then he says that there's, like, a phase two. And she's like, oh, phase two. Like, that sounds very formal and, like, stuff happening. Okay. Like, they have the this, like, mind-blowing tiramisu. And mm -hmm. Rory even says, like, if everything else had been garbage, like, this tiramisu is, like, th it's the best date I've ever been on. Like, <laughs> so good and then so they wrap up their meal and off off to phase two so they're walking to the bonfire and dean asks her what book she brought and i love this again this like showing the audience how invested he is in her he's like i know you i know you brought a book so like let's talk about it and it just it, it's just to show us that like he's paying attention that he loves her mm. That he's, he's so into her and is wanting to, like, just do everything for her. And is, mm -hmm. is yeah, he's just, like, so invested in her mm -hmm. at this point. He really is. I was actually, I was feeling a bit weird about how much I almost felt like I was half defending him in the Donna Reed episode. And I think that came from, well, I'm a person who, I, I always want to be on everybody's side. And I don't want my characters to let me down. Or I don't want to disagree with my characters. The ones that I actually really like, I always want to find ways to make them seem like the best person. <laughs> and there were a couple of things in Dean that I couldn't really, they didn't really track for me. That his, like, his weird choices in the Donna Reed episode, and, like, the, like his weird opinions, um, to me, they, they weren't in line with things that we had learned about him from before. So right. I almost, almost wound back on myself being like, oh no, I think I was too easy, too easy on him. But at the same time, no, I think he has his own, again, 16-year-old version and view and ideas of what romantic is. And it's a very, I think, traditional type of romance mm -hmm. and yeah. romancing and wooing. And I think maybe he hasn't actually been able to do that or have a relationship kind of like that before. We don't know exactly what his relationship was like with previous girl, but I feel like that is what he is after, despite being a very, you know, seemingly new agey type of young 
guy who, you know, reads Sylvia Plath and, you know, listens to groovy Lilith Fair <laughs> artists and stuff, you know? So, yeah, it, 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 it makes sense and it tracks for me that, um, that he would be this romantic and invested in this kind of a relationship. Yeah, he fully wants the, like, traditional roles when it comes to his relationships. And because he, yeah, he's showing that, like, he wants to be the spoiler. He wants to be the one to do the grand gestures because yeah. in his mind, like, that's the, the the guy's job is to do that. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to be the provider in that way. Mm. And he doesn't necessarily mean that it means that Rory can't be independent and, and work and do all of those things. But he does still want his future to have some semblance of that structure. Yeah. So he wants a place she, in her life, I think. I think yeah. he, he wants to have some kind of a role in her life. And it's almost like, I mean, I don't know. I'm now, I, I, now I'm thinking ahead to like what might happen between them. But she could be just a very independent woman. And all of her future plans are all her going off to Harvard and doing the school thing. Things that he will not stand in the way of. But I wonder if he has any fears at some point that maybe she won't need him. I think he wants, he, like you said, he wants to be the provider. He wants to feel needed. And he wants to be some kind of a role in her life. And he's, yeah, trying to find it. Trying to find that way. And now he's doing it by pretty dinners and uh, cars. A car. So <laughs> they're going through the town. He asks her what book she brought. She brought the New Yorker. She brought a magazine. And I do not know what that says about their relationship. There's got to be some symbolism there, right? Like, I think it actually means that it like casual, a mm. little bit more casual mm. than yeah, the fact that she didn't bring a full on novel. <laughs> She's like, well, maybe I'll just flip through like when he's off to the bathroom, I'll just flip through the New Yorker and read an article. Yeah, right I think it's the symbolism of between the like, Anna Karenina versus the New Yorker. So like, it's mm -hmm. extremely casual, comparatively. They walk to the gazebo because the bonfire is about to be lit. And the mayor is talking about, this is, you know, on this spot, you know, this is where the two lovers met. And it's like, this is where I met my wife. And uh, during this whole speech, Dean is staring at Rory so lovingly. He's just like adoring her. And at this point, did anything feel ominous to you? <laughs> um, I was more... <laughs> because I'm me. <laughs> because I'm me, I was replacing Rory with myself. And I was frightened. Because <laughs> I was like, I, d I don't like surprises. I don't like spontaneity. And if I was on a date, even with somebody I'd been with for three months, I would be like, what is happening next? I need to know because where are you about to bring me? I don't know. And the fact that they eventually end up in this, like, sketchy-ass place. Salvage yard. Like, gone. Like, I don't care who you are. <laughs> take me home. Take me uh, home now. <laughs> so, um, yeah. No, I was too afraid. <laughs> okay. I knew, we could, I knew we could trust Dean, but I was still, like, there was still enough of me that I didn't trust Dean. <laughs> okay. So, the mayor is, like, telling the town and everybody how he like met his wife like almost at this exact spot at the gazebo and i'm there like okay well where is she like why isn't she up there with him like blah, blah, blah. but no she's i'm playing bingo in bridgeport she's not here <laughs> for this event like i guess she's not one of the like political wives that accompanies their husbands mm. to all of the events but that, <laughs> that's like that's a real true like long time lifetime relationship right there you know yes. <laughs> She's, she's, she's like, I've bingo. been to enough of these bonfires. I am. It's bingo night at Go Out With My Girls. You should not mess yeah. with bingo night. Like, exactly. <laughs> amazing. And then they're about to light the bonfire. And Rory looks at Dean. It's like, okay, show me the surprise now. Like, let's go. And he's like, but they're literally just about to light the bonfire. Did they not say? And she's like, we have time. And now another annual tradition of Stars Hollow, the annual who has matches moment <laughs> that they take. Because apparently it's going to take eons to get this bonfire lit uh so off they go to this like salvage yard this like scrap yard junkyard situation and Ray's like you brought me to beirut like where are we what is happening <laughs> and dean tells her that he's building her a car like you're 16 that is basically like saying i bought you a mansion like yeah you're building her a car it's like the ultimate freedom you're like are you this is crazy mm -hmm. what and so Rory's okay. response doesn't really come as a sh as a surprise to me because she's not instantly like, wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much. She's just like, huh? 
And he can't tell, does she like it or not? I don't get enough of an answer of like, if she does like it or doesn't. Me watching, I'm just thinking, you you gotta be clear with me, girl. Do you like it or do you not? She keeps me hanging for a little too long. Um, Well, she kisses him and she's happy and she's smiling and she's like, I think she's into it. I need the words. (laughs) I need the words. I I would be almost like Lorelai. I'd be almost, or Lorelai, I'd almost be like Rory where I, it's almost too good to be true, right? And so I would just be like, I, I'd love it, but I don't trust it. Like, Mm -hmm. what do you mean? (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. I don't Mm -hmm. understand. How long is it going to take? How much money is this going to cost you? Is this like a bunch of time? Like, I would just be like, I don't understand. I love it and concept, but I just don't, I need more details about the actual logistics of this car building situation. (laughs) Dean brings up, in my opinion, the extremely valuable point of her spending time (laughs) on the bus that could be spent with him. Like, Mm -hmm. you know what? That is some sound logic because she's like, you can't do this. That's crazy. And he's like, well, you could spend more time with me if you had a car. Yeah, I'm into that. And they get in the car, door falls off and he's like, I'll fix that. And she says, no, I like it that way. (laughs) 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 I thought that was so cute. She's just like, it's great. Like This is amazing. She's maintaining the ease. I love this because this could be, well, it is building up to be a very, very tense thing, but she's just comfortable so comfortable with him making it a night it's been such a great date so far and she's just loving it so yeah and then i have this clip of them in the car so they hop in it's on this like cute kind of like patchy full of holes plaid blanket but it's there so yay Mm -hmm. for that we're having one of those moments right now what moments one of those moments when everything is so perfect and so wonderful that you almost feel sad because nothing can ever be this good again. Very Elizabeth Barrett Browning, <laughs> just to bring her back again. Right? Yeah. I've like had those moments where you're just like, this is surreal. Like this is so, such a beautiful moment. And it's like, it, it is so good that you almost want to cry because it's so overwhelmingly wonderful. And then he goes on to say like, so I'm depressing you. And I'm like, well, that's not like the point. No. But but like, I guess it could be depressing, but it's just like so beautiful. And so when she said that, did you feel like it was <laughs> all about to hit the fan? Because that's usually like no. the biggest foreshadowing. Somebody being like, I've never been this happy before. And like next scene, like. <laughs> no, I still wasn't there. I, actually, actually, to be honest, I I had, well, I had a feeling that we were leading up to something really big, but I wasn't okay. sure if it was going to be like sleeping together mm. or some other kind of confession, some other kind of like. Eggplant <laughs> dance. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> You got me. I did. I did. Oh, um, I can bring it up at least one more time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so my my <laughs> my uh, fear, like I actually had this sort of lingering thing in here. Like, is this where they're gonna like get hot and heavy? Is this what's gonna happen in this episode? Or like, is this where someone's gonna try and make a move? Is this what Dean is doing? Like, I don't know Dean enough. This is where I realized that I don't know him enough to really trust him and trust what he's going to do. So I was really, really scared. Okay. And so they have a sweet little smooch after that. And then (laughs) this happens. Rory? Yeah? I love you. Rory? Yeah. Did you hear me? Uh-huh. <gasps> like, and poor Rory. Just like short circuits. She completely yeah. just shorts out. Like her brain yeah. just like, bzz, oh my God, what? Like, what? Okay. And she goes on to say like, I love the car. Like she just mm-hmm. is so taken aback and caught off guard. But like also read the room. Like you have this like sweet, amazing moment. And then he's gazing longingly into your eyes and says your name like that. And then she's just like, yeah, what's up? Like, <laughs> and okay. Have you ever had somebody say that they love you and then you couldn't say it back? I don't know. This got me thinking about when t- t- the, the first person to say I love you in the relationships. I don't know who it has been. I cannot remember in any of my relationships who said it first. I would feel like I would say it because I I'm very open when I say it. I'm I'm, I'm very I I'm not I'm not precious with it. I will say it as soon as I feel it and hmm. 
I don't expect to hear it back. I will just say it. Um, so I could not really relate with either of them at this point because I've always been super, super open like that. Though I have had somebody who I was totally disinterested in and it was the first time I've ever had to like turn somebody down and it didn't work. But that's a story for another day. Mm. <laughs> what about you? I have and it was awful. And then I had to backpedal quite a, quite a bit. Um, I said, you're great. <laughs> because I was like, uh, 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 it was, I was with somebody who had dabbled in some recreational drugs a little harder than they usually do. Mm. It was, it was not plant matter. It was pos it was more, it was different. Mm. And it elicited some very lovey dovey feelings in some people sometimes. I'm like, we've been dating for a little while and it's somebody that I had dated in a past in the past and had a very deep history with. Like first time doing the eggplant dance. Kind of <laughs> I haven't been planning on using it here, but I'm so excited that I got to. My head so. is in my hands. Oh listeners. <laughs> listeners she got me <laughs> so it was like many like it was many years after that and so there was history there was baggage there, you know there was stuff and so we had reconnected gotten back together and he was inebriated he was under some influence just just enough for when he said it i was like oh no like it didn't feel like it could have even necessarily been his actual feelings you know mm -hmm. and i was just like you're great. <laughs> just like, I do not know what to say. And then I backpedaled and I said it back, but I didn't want to or really mean it. And I did later, like it, it just took me a little bit longer to like get there, but it wasn't in that moment with him in that headspace. And then immediately I was like, oh, that's, I don't think that's the answer. I don't think that's what I'm <laughs> supposed to say, but I panicked. Um, and so then at this point in the show, <laughs> Dean gets mad and this sucks. This is so awful and uncomfortable and he's mm -hmm. so, okay, like poor Dean sucks. Mm -hmm. Like you're 16, you've put your heart in your hands and she didn't say, I don't love you. She's just like, this is a really big deal and I need a little bit more time. And yeah, gets, I can be both of them. I can be both of them in this. Yeah, I know that, exactly. that heartbreak of when someone does not feel as deeply as you do, or they don't seem to. But I've also been her of just, wow, I there's there's a lot to think about. And she even says so. That this is a lot to think about. And like, can you not see that she she still feels a lot? That's it. She, she puts it out into different words and would you so he seems to say it with the expectation that she'll say it back but like does he really expect her to say something without knowing what it means does he really expect rory to say something like that without really knowing? right yeah and it, he gets so mad and yes he was so vulnerable and it's so raw and you expect somebody to f say it back most of the time that's why people typically wait to say it until they're almost certain that they're gonna get the response back but you don't just flip out like she obviously cares for you so deeply he is hurt and i get that but it's he's awful and he, yeah. rory is trying to salvage it the best that she can his understanding of it is also flawed because he says it's something you either feel or you don't no way no Absolutely it's more complicated not. It's so much more complicated than that, my dude. Like, ooh, if if you didn't think that way, you wouldn't be quite so offended right now. And yeah. if you allowed yourself to be like, well, maybe she's thinking about it. If you guys, if you allowed yourself to talk about your feelings or like help help her out to figure out her feelings, it would be so much easier. But no, you're right. He's hurt. He's wrong. And he's hurt. That's it. He's 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 both of those things. And then once again, he brings Lorelai into it, who has nothing to do with it. And he's like, "What? You're gonna go home and like discuss it with your mother? Like, I, 
once again, he's like weaponizing her relationship with her mom, who is the only person that has been there for her, her whole life. And yes, he's probably threatened by their closeness because other girls are more independent of their parents and only rely on like their friends. But then this is where I question like, well, who are you going to talk with, Dean? Nobody. Who are you going to ask about this? <laughs> yeah. You're right? going to keep it you're going to keep it all in, all to yourself. You're going to try and handle mm -hmm. it alone. And that is unhealthy and unwise. And that's not going to get you anywhere. You're just going to be suffering through. Dude, do you, are you not realizing this? That she actually has someone to talk it through with mm -hmm. and you don't. And it almost feels like the beginnings, and I might this might be a stretch, but it, it feels like he is trying to like distance her from her mom by mm -hmm. any time that they have a disagreement it's Lorelai's mm -hmm. fault or you know so it feels almost like low-key controlling where he's trying to like take more of Rory for himself and pull her away from the people that she leans on for support he might be doing that in his own head as well by like Rory to him is so perfect and he doesn't want her to be influenced by other because I think he thinks so highly of her that he wants and believes that she should decide everything all by herself. That she should be fully, fully in control of everything that she... And he almost sees as if... He almost sees that influence from her mom or anybody else could be hold her back or... Again, I'm not sure if this is coming out the way I mean it, but I, I think Dean really, really thinks almost perfection of Rory. He probably thinks she can figure it out herself, but like, girl, she's 16. <laughs> it's almost objectifying in a way, or like, it's, it's like almost like a level of like possessiveness. And, and so at this point, Rory's trying to explain and she does bring up like, well, yeah, with my mom, like it is important because she didn't have the like solid relationships like dean probably came from like we like the nuclear like standard home where there is a loving family and a loving husband and a loving wife and she's like i didn't have that it was just me and my mom and then in, instead of seeing what she's trying to say with like not having any real world examples of what love is or looks like or should be he goes you don't get pregnant from saying i love you and she's like that's not what i said like it had nothing to do with that like where did that even come from? That's not what she's trying to say. She was just saying that like she didn't have any real world examples of what being in love looks like. So she has no reference point. That's what she was trying to say. And he just is so furious and hurt and blind at this point that he's not even listening to anything that she's saying. He's refusing to listen. At this point, I recalled Tristan from the earlier scene. Tristan's, ah, to be young and in love. Oh, <laughs> it's not all about right. making out on people's lockers. Sometimes nope. it's about being really hurt. Yes, absolutely. And Rory is just trying to be like, no, like we're still having a good night. This is a great date. Like she's trying to reconcile. She's trying to get through to him. And then she's just trying to also like move along. Like let's basically like, let's pretend this never happened. Let's keep having our nice date. And he won't even let her touch him. He's like recoiling from her, mm. gets out of the car and walks away. Like he's like, let's go. We're leaving. And it's gutting. I do like that he, I do like that he says, I'll take you home. <laughs> Because mm. I think if he had just walked away and didn't say anything, I'd have been like, um, leaves her um, in the excuse like, me. <laughs> like again, this is oh my God. absolute fear. Like, where is he bringing her? What is he doing? Is he is she going to get home safe? Meanwhile, at the bonfire, there is a nice shot of Suki and Jackson being really sweet together. You think that it, the same thing's going to happen because Jackson starts saying something, and you're like, oh my God, is he going to say it's us to Suki? Like, what's going on here? And he just says that, like, I'm like having a really, I'm really enjoying this or something along those lines, where it's heartfelt and genuine and it's not as big as I love you, but it's just that, like, nice open reminder or just like putting into words that he's. They're feeling really happy and pleased with one another's company and the fact that they're dating. And I thought that was really cute because mm -hmm. they do make it seem like it's, they're also going to say it. Yeah, they do. They do. But they present an alternative, an alternative for expressing your feelings without using the words, I love you. Exactly. Exactly. And so Rachel sits down next to Luke because we had seen her zipping around. She's taking pictures and... Paparazzi, Luke. Rachel. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
Rachel finally sits down with Luke and Luke cuts to the chase. He's like, Rachel, why are you here? And she again plays it off. Like she said earlier in the episode, she's just like, oh, I was walking through O'Hare and there was a flight for Hartford in 20 minutes. Like cut the crap. That is <laughs> not, people don't just decide to do that for no reason. And so she just says, like, I missed you. And he says, like, I missed you too. And she's like, well, since we're being honest, what's the deal with Lorelai? Then we've got this little clippy clip of do. <laughs> no deal with Lorelai. We're friends. For now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in the future. Well, Lorelai is, you know, she's just, um, I, I mean, at times it seems like, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> but I am happy to see you. He's so eloquent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, okay, here I was seeing Rachel contrasting Rory. So Rachel, unlike Rory, acts and speaks on her emotions. Like, goes for it. Her heart rules. So whatever, whatever thought comes into her head, like, oh, I go home. I just go home for a visit. I'm going to do that. Act on a whim where Rory thinks it all through. And this is the mind versus heart, right? And then we'll see that Luke is like right in the middle. He sort of wavers sometimes between mind and heart, but I think he is stuck right in the middle and so doesn't move. <laughs> mm. He's Fair. not going to yeah. act with, uh, yeah, he is, he eventually he's pondering. And I think in general in life right now, he is pondering and pondering. I am a ponderer. We get nowhere without someone pushing us or pulling us into a situation. Yep. So, yeah. And and Rachel does say, like, what about like later? And he's like, I don't, I don't know. And what I actually really like about Rachel is that she can be there. She can be like, hey, I missed you. Let's spend time together, whatever. But she's not really like threatened by Lorelai because she knows that she has no claim on Luke. And she's not like, oh, but how could you say, like, how could you want to be with her when I'm here? You know, like she's perfectly open to the idea of him being interested in somebody else which i think is very honorable of her like she's not possessive she's not jealous she's just well she's the one who she's left. really yeah but even there are some people out there who will like still be oh, yeah. possessive and jealous even though they're the ones who broke it off or whatever like she had no claim over him but and she's okay with that and i love that like i did i love that they didn't make her you can't talk to her now that I'm back right. or whatever, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it could have gone that way and they didn't take it there, which I really love. From no, this you... little dialogue that we just had, finally, someone to confront Luke about Lorelai. Right? Oh, I, well, oh Emily God. did. Emily did. Yeah, but I mean, where's that going to go? <laughs> yeah, fair. But finally, someone who is from the outside, who just sees like a little bibbit and I, and, and we expect Luke to say something and we get that babble of something or other. <laughs> but yeah, that was really refreshing. Like, oh, dude, you're on the spot now. What are you going to say? <laughs> yep. And then she says that she's going to go get some Founders Day punch. She's like, OK, cool. Off she goes. And then in comes Lorelai, sits down right next to where, like, I guess there had been some time elapsing between the two, uh, but it's kind of hard to tell the way that this is shot. Um, we do have Lane walking by with her parade of Koreans, which is just, they all look so bleak and grim. And it looks like the <laughs> worst time nobody's talking and they're walking like two by two. It's terrible. <laughs> Then Lorelai shows up. <laughs> she tries to be, again, super casual about Rachel. And she's like, what's the haps? What's the yeah. haps with you and Rachel? <laughs> and then he's like, oh, the haps. Okay. The ha and then they just have this like back and forth about that. Their conversation is so easy. Like, That's they exactly what are, I wrote. <laughs> they're so comfortable with each other. There's a visual note here as well, a costuming visual note. Her scarf matches his gloves. Oh. I don't know if it's like a perfect match, but it's in near enough match yeah um, and i thought that was really really sweet so here we have luke from one angle being asked by rachel about lorelei and then from lorelei asking about rachel and he's just like i don't know about anybody i don't know what's going on in luke <laughs> like <laughs> i don't know and then we we've got this i don't know you spend a lot of time debating things you know is it right is it wrong should i do this should i do that i mean Sometimes you should just jump in, take a shot. And what's the worst that can happen? She left before I lived. Maybe this time. I think that's really great. You know? Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Where was that kind of decisiveness or where was that kind of attitude? 
when it came to Lorelai? Mm-hmm. Why is it you jump in, take a shot? What happened? Well, and who really is he talking about in this moment? Talking about Rachel, but is he really? Well, he because then he immediately says she left before I lived. Like, so he does say, like, I think it is about her. But it's also about Lorelai. But it's also about Lorelai. And so mm-hmm. Lorelai is like, you know, I'm so happy for you. The words and the face mm-hmm. do not match. <laughs> no, her not face is like, not oh, I'm so happy for you. Like, <laughs> she's not mm-hmm. happy. She's sad. And lonely and tragic luke by this point he's sort of feeling a bit bit like he can sort of make the next step or something move along from whatever the situation on the bench is so uh he moves to get up and i guess go meet rachel at the punch or something um but before he gets up he punches lorelei's knee Hmm. rubs it punch and rubs her knee before he gets up and leaves (gasps) the electricity (laughs) that must have felt like the yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Tingles. Tingles everywhere. And Lorelai oh. does say, well, because he's like, I'm going to go check up on Rachel. And she's like, that must be really nice. And they have a funny <laughs> little exchange about, you know, maybe she's puking. And Lorelai's like, it's still nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. And that's why he, like, gives her the little, like, encouraging, like, punch on the leg. Little jab. And then, yep, he goes. And we're left sad. Because he's going after the wrong girl. And Lorelai is at this point had enough of waiting and loneliness and and the festival and all of that. So she goes home and she decides to call Max. And I've got I've got the moment right here. Hi, you've reached Max Medina. I'm not here right now, so leave a message at the beep and I'll get back to you. Thanks. Rory? We just broke up. Oh, gutting. It's so many feelings all in one instant because you feel, well, Lorelai doesn't actually end up calling Max. You know, she doesn't even leave a message. So that doesn't amount to anything. Rory's home. That's when we find out it's the, they broke up. They didn't just have an argument. They broke up. But I also found that I was feeling, oh, this is something they can feel together on the same level. We can both be Heart and heartbroken and whatever. This show is so great at creating moments where you don't just feel one way or even mm. two ways. You can just feel so many things all at one moment. And I just think that's brilliant storytelling and and performance as well, but storytelling for sure. Yeah. And and I think for Lorelai, even though, you know, she won't be like consciously being like, now we're both in the same boat and we're both sad or whatever. Now she'll have the extremely all-encompassing distraction of my child needs me so none of that matters anymore because my child needs me and it's about her now my life can wait (laughs) because this is more important now absolutely um also what a terrible reason to break up but i guess that's what 16 year olds do i was was if you don't love me i can't be with you (laughs) Yeah, if you, like you don't verbalize that you love me, so we're, yeah. we clearly can't be together. Like all the exact same things that were true before are still true, but I don't know. Teenagers, you know, like it's it's the vulnerability. It's especially in like two thousands. I feel like maybe now young men are being raised in a way to feel their feelings a little bit more openly, and and I feel like it just it's too big and scary for Dean to face. So instead of facing it, he's just out. Yeah. Well, and as I pointed out earlier, who who does he have to talk about it with? Nobody. Who do any any young men, especially in you know the early two thousands, young men don't talk about their feelings and their relationship, right? With other like what would Todd? What would Todd say? Oh, it's too bad, man. Hey, so uh, about my gear over here, like bummer, dude. <laughs> you bummer. <laughs> <laughs> right. And yeah, so he's got nobody to be like, you or her, but overreacting. She still has feelings for you. Like, she cares about you. She has, He's got nobody to talk to about this. Right. He's just going to go home and his mom's going to be like, what happened? And he's going to be like, nothing. We broke up. Nothing. We be and then like, slam the door. And slam the door. Yep. <laughs> I can see it. So that's us. That's the episode for this week. I'm sure you're excited to move on to see what happens. The oh my gosh. aftermath. Oh my gosh. The I'll say. Yeah. Yes. All right. 
Send us out. That has been us for this week. Thanks so much for joining us. It's really, really great to be back with Gilmore Girls. Uh, do let us know how you're enjoying the series. We're loving your comments so much. Oh, we, they're so great. We, we've said before that we will like do screenshots and share them with each other um, every time they come in. So they go a long way and we really, really, really appreciate it. So if you haven't already subscribed, feel free. That would be brilliant. Tune in next week. We'll be back uh, next Thursday here on YouTube or wherever you stream your podcasts. She's been Lisa. I've been Jenny. We have been the Belladonna Watch Club and we'll see you next time. Bye. See you later.